We make way for Jason McCourty, NFL Network. Good morning, football analyst. And uh, was on the call for the uh, Chiefs and the Ravens, Westwood One Radio. He joins us on the program. What bothered you the most about what you saw with the Ravens against the Chiefs? The offense. Uh, the defense figured it out in the second half. They were shutting down the Kansas City Chiefs for the most part, forcing punts. But Lamar Jackson and the offense, they never were able to get anything going. You look at the way the game ended, the two running backs, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, they both had three carries apiece. Uh, they threw the ball a ton. And then when they did throw it, Lamar, when he got the ball, there wasn't any quick processing. Every play seemed so hard. Even the remarkable plays he made where he spun off and he threw one to Zay Flowers, those plays seemed so hard. Steve Spagnuolo made it so tough for that offense to get anything going. That was very disappointing. This year was supposed to be different from an offensive standpoint with Munkin, the way Lamar was playing, throwing the ball from the pocket, and we just didn't see any of that on Sunday. Okay, so former defensive back, explain to me how Travis Kelsey still gets open. He's so good against zone, so good. And then he shows you a man-to-man with the first touchdown pass with Kyle Hamilton on him, who has been tremendous this year as a DB, all pro and all of that. Perfect ball placement, back shoulder catch. He makes it from the end zone. But as you watch Travis Kelsey, even studying for the game, getting up to a Buffalo played a ton of zone, and he knows the exact spots. He's such a smart football player and got a chance to talk to him a little bit before the game. The first thing he said to my brother was, we're coming for every record that the Patriots have, and it's starting today. <laughs> and he did it. It was unbelievable. 11 targets, 11 catches. It's insane. They didn't double team him much. They just let, they just try to go play their defense, and you just can't do that when Mahomes is the quarterback and Kelsey's the guy he's throwing to him. Yeah, that's that's the guy I got to worry about. I, I mean, I, I like Pacheco. I mean, Rice, I, they do have some players. That's the one guy I got to stop. Like, that's where we begin. I'm not going to stop Mahomes, but I got to stop Kelsey. That'll help me stopping Mahomes. Exactly. You go into that game and it's just like first drive of the game, they're hitting <laughs> Kelsey, a fourth and one, they're rolling out, they're throwing back. It's like you go into the game and just, all right, if we lose this game at the end of the day, it's not going to be – because Travis Kelsey killed us, and he's not getting a record on us, and he did all of the above. What bothered you the most about the Lions and the Niners? The collapse. I I mean, you're up that many points. You get to the second half, and yes, a lot of attention should be paid to Dan Campbell going for it on fourth down. Beyond that, the drops, the fumble, it just seemed like they went in at halftime, and we saw C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's waving to the crowd when the yeah. score is 21-7. Got a little over their skis, feeling really good. Moments seemed like it got too big, and they collapsed in that second half. And I do think for Dan Campbell, I get it. The aggressiveness, the fourth down play calls, that's what got them in that game. That's the way they've approached every game going forward. But it's like now you're here. You're in this moment, and you go up 17 points if he kicks the first field goal. But Josh Reynolds drops the pass. You could have extended the drive. But then later on in the game, a chance to tie it up. I thought for sure right there he would take the points. But it's disappointing to see the Lions, how far they've come this year, and just kind of fall apart in that second half. But this would I don't understand this. You know, we watch basketball, and I always say, don't let the best player on the floor beat me. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm never – I don't want Michael Jordan to have the ball. I don't want Kobe to have the ball. Whatever it takes, they're not beating me because now I'm going to have somebody who's not used to taking those shots. Why are you going to Reynolds – and not uh, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown or, or Laporta. Like, I, I, that's what I don't understand. And granted, Laporta is a rookie, but still, he had an unbelievable year. I want those players who have been in the position, their go to guys, to g- at least get the ball or try. No doubt about it. And it's almost the same thing. Jordan, at one point, he kicks it to Steve Kerr and he makes a big shot. John Paxson, those guys step up and make a big shot. Josh Reynolds, has been a guy, you look at the game against the Rams, he was a guy that stepped up and made some big catches. And I do think you design plays to go to, whether it's Amon Ra, whether it's Sam Laporta. Well, Laporta had one of his hands. Amon Ra did too. So it was almost like a team-wide thing on offense where they kind of fell apart. But Josh Reynolds is a veteran. You need him in those moments to step up. It was especially the first one. It was a play where Goff is scrambling around. He's looking for anybody, and it would have been a first down. So I'm with you. You design those plays to go to your guys but sometimes they take it away and you need somebody else to step up. And it was Reynolds' moment to do so, and he did. We're talking to uh, Jason McCourty, uh, NFL Network Good Morning Football Analyst, was on the call uh, with the uh, Chiefs and the Ravens on Westwood One. Going forward, who's more likely to be back in the title game, the Ravens or the Lions? 
Oh, I'm going to say the Ravens. And I think uh, if they can figure some things out, they have a lot of free agents. That's going to be the tough thing for them. A guy like Justin Matabika had a career year. He may go get paid somewhere. But I still do think Lamar Jackson is a great, great football player. He's probably going to be a two-time MVP. The difference is they can get back to that game, but it has to be more to figure out how to get over the hump. I think for Lamar Jackson, as you watch that game, there was a big difference when you watch Patrick Mahomes, those quick, easy passes, they come with a blitz. He knows exactly where to go with the ball. He's not holding on to it. With Lamar on the other side, there was a lot of holding on to the ball. It lets him make great plays, but too many times a game kills him. What's it like when you're facing a running back like Isaiah Pacheco? Like, he runs hard. I, it feels like he runs harder than any running back. It, is he running harder? He definitely is. As a former DB, that's one of those things where during the course of the week, I tell the linebackers and the D linemen, do whatever the hell you got to do. Don't let this guy get to me <laughs> untouched in the secondary because that's not that's not what I'm paid to do. I'm paid to cover these guys on the outside, not to have these head-on collisions with Pacheco, but he definitely he runs angry, he runs pissed off, and I love it because he's a former Scarlet Knight, Rutgers guy, Rutgers legend, and he sets the tone for those guys because – not only does he run hard, but watch him how he gets up after a hard run. He's yelling. He's screaming. I'm watching him at the end of the game as they're taking a knee. And he is just walking around the field screaming, looking at his sideline, looking at Baltimore's sideline. So I think everybody feeds off of his energy. When do you make your Super Bowl pick? Oh, that'll probably be coming next week. Um, it's going to be a tough one. I, I'm not doing too well championship weekend. Uh, I had the Lions and Ravens in the Super Bowl, so I've heard a lot uh, from the Chiefs <laughs> fans and 49ers so far. Of uh, I have egg on my face, and I just need to shut up at this point. So my predictions are struggling a little bit right now. How's Peter Schrager doing on his picks? Oh, Schrager's walking around. There's no hat that's going to fit his head right now uh, <laughs> because it's like five years in a row he's picked the right winner. And then, of course, this year he picks the exact matchup. So he tries to act like it's not a big deal, but his head's bigger than ever right now. Is this a dangerous Super Bowl town? <laughs> this is a dangerous town no matter what. Why do you think they, <laughs> they say Vegas, you only need about two days, and now Super Bowl, people are going to be out there for an entire week. So um, you got to get in, get out, have a great time, but uh, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to be down there. But did you guys ever sneak out when you were playing? <laughs> I never, I never snuck out and made it all the way uh, there to Vegas. But the no, no, I'm talking games, about when you were like the night before a game. Uh, did you guys? So, there, so never in Vegas. I played there in 21, and no one snuck out. People were tired coming from Miami. But there was a year where I was playing for the Titans, and we went down to Miami, and okay. we had 16 guys late for curfew. And of course, we lost that game the next day. A few guys stayed Sunday night after the game. And had to make it back Monday before our first meeting. None of them uh, made it back. Chris Johnson was on that team. I saw him tell the story somewhere of the whole recap. He, he was one of the guys that stayed. But that was that was history in Tennessee of that. Everybody talks about that game and that night where we had that many guys late for curfew. It's called the Miami flu there, Jace. <laughs> no Miami. doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us. Great to talk to you again. Anytime. Appreciate you having me. That's Jason McCording, NFL Network. Good morning, football analyst. He and his brother uh, on the call. He's done a great job, NFL Network. I mean, that's a very comfortable watch and listen with that group. Uh, 